The Kuliam, the story, it's not just one cared and the other didn't, it's that they both cared and looked after each other. It's peace, friendship, love, understanding, and respect. I'm Ellen McInnes. I am um, the head of the Kuliang Families Group. I lived in China for 30 years, from 1988 until almost 2018. We came back in 2017. So we had 30 years there in Nanjing, Beijing, Shanghai, and Chongqing. And we raised our daughters there. Uh, they were nine and seven when we went to China, and now they're in their 40s. I think Don had, Peter's dad is Don, I think Don had a pretty big influence on us, but mostly, you know, he lived in Chinese areas and until Peter was through high school. Um, so their family was very much mm, with the Chinese people, and I think that was a that's probably the biggest, biggest effect. Influences. His enthusiasm for China was spread down to, to his children. Just like our enthusiasm for China spread to Zhonghua, uh, Ai Zhong, Ai Hua, they both picked that up. And then, of course, they carried it in their own way, television and <laughs> other things. Sansa made Peter's slippers, his little shoes. It's very special to still have these. It's she made them by hand, you know. They're handmade. They're beautifully made. You can see her tiny, tiny stitches. They're so perfect. It's a good thing we have this plastic uh, picture holder because on this side we have on this side, we have Peter's mom and Peter and his brother. You can see the little red shoes. And then on this side, we have Ai Hua when she was one year old. And she's wearing the same little red shoes. We now have a granddaughter whose not, feet aren't big enough to <laughs> wear the shoes. She's only one year old. But these shoes will pass from generation to generation. It's 75 years old. It's a wonderful memento, a, a reminder of Sansa. couldn't keep him home. Yeah. He was 84 and everyone said to him, oh Don, you're, you're 84, are you sure you want to go to China? Yes! <laughs> I'm going back!
started the work after we visited Kuliang. 2015, you couldn't find Kuliang on the internet. Maybe 20 sites had something that mentioned Kuliang. So I just started my research and I just did as much research as I could and finally I found the 1907 handbook to Kuliang with a map and the name list in it. And so then I knew once I had a name list, I knew who I was looking for. So that was a big help. And once we had that, we knew a lot about Kuliang because those old directories and handbooks have a lot of information about Kuliang and its history, what it was like, what they did. Important to say that when Ellen first began her interest in, so in Kuliang, it's because it, that was part of my uh, babyhood. But as she researched and as she met people, the true story of Kuliang and the people in Kuliang, the Chinese people and the, and the foreigners, uh, came out and it was very exciting to see what they did. And that's really what has motivated Ellen, not just looking for a house uh, or a pair of shoes, <laughs> but actually looking at the people who lived there, what they did and their relationship with China. Uh, in particular, the, the friendship and caring that was going both ways. I really hope that not just people to people have good relationships, but then the governments as yeah. well. It will be great. <laughs>